Hey there, I'm Ryan and welcome to today's landscape tutorial. All of the tools and materials will be listed in the video description. And if you'd like help with the drawing process, I will have the traceable up over on Patreon, where you can also get access to the eBooks, bonus lessons, art critiques. There's a lot up there to help aid you in your creative and artistic endeavors. But with that, let's jump into today's tutorial and get creative together. So we'll begin here today with a one inch flat headed brush, which I will dip the bottom third of it into a little bit of water, then proceed to wipe off the excess. This will just help keep our paint wet for a little bit longer. And with that, we'll grab some titanium white, move that to a clean spot on our palette, a hint of cerulean blue. You can see I'm just using the corner of my brush to grab that, a little bit of Mars black to desaturate it. We don't want it to be too prominent of a blue, and from there, we can start painting in our sky. Now we'll do so around our backing trees and our foreground weeping willow here. A lot of these markings are initially being done in a vertical stroke, just because it's the most pragmatic with the openings in the trees. And we'll go over it a couple of times just to build that pigment as acrylics are inherently fairly thin. Now here we go with layer number two and you can already see the difference when the paint is more thick and we have quite a bit on there. Just looks a lot more professional and this is something where I am actively going over portions of the tree because we can always just paint the tree on top of the sky a little bit later on. So we're just making it so we have a bit more option. Now, once our sky is fully dry to the touch, we are going to switch over to a filbert brush. And this is fantastic because it has nice rounded edges for blending. It is a sharp top for detail. And we're going to use it to block in the background here. Now, on my palette, we have two new pigments, a yellow ochre and a green gold. Alternatively, you could use a sap green but I'm going to grab some of our green gold, move that down here on the palette. We'll grab about a third of that in our yellow ochre. Then we'll need to thicken it. So I'll add titanium white and we'll darken it with our Mars black. We're looking for a mid valued green here, something not too bright, not too dark, something nice and in the middle. So we're just going back and forth until we have good pigment for our background and a good amount of it. You can see that I'm mixing small amounts of paint and that's intentional because if we get the pigment very wrong we don't have to correct a lot of it. So we can slowly add and build into what we need and this looks great. Now we'll start applying this to our most distant tree working around what we have in the midground and working around to some degree the uh, draping foliage in the foreground. I'm making a lot of these markings with a bit of a tap and a drag motion and when I'm towards the top of the tree I'm rotating my brush I'm doing a very light pressured tap and that's going to give us the illusion of a bit of a protruding piece there of foliage. Now we're going in with the technique that we are, this tap and drag so that we get a little bit of texture showing through. And that'll be a great detail later on. Right now it'll look fairly flat, fairly basic. That's okay. It's just part of the process. And we'll bring that up here, up here. Right now we have a lot of that foliage in the front, that draping tree that's covering quite a bit of the distant trees. Now we'll get a little bit closer, grab some Mars Black with that same brush, take off the excess. We really don't want too much on here and we'll work that into our previous mix, not 
using the entirety of it. I still want some for reference later, but we'll get a little bit on here. We'll switch over to our fan brush and we'll apply a small amount to the ends of our bristles. Then we'll go in and tap in what will be some shadow and detail. Now, as you can see, we're rendering so many tiny little markings. These will be great little openings within the foliage for our shadows. And this isn't our final layer. We are going to be covering it up. So don't worry if portions look messy. We're just trying to create texture for the background of these trees. And we can also create darker clusters here, here. And the idea with that is that there will be portions of this tree that don't have protruding foliage. And because of that, we'll be able to see into these darker crevices that are deeper, that receive less light. So we're just tapping on this texture and detail. And I'm not applying the entirety of the brush. Typically, I'm just using a corner an edge of it because that is enough to create a lot of small markings typically and if you go with the entire body of the brush you can kind of get this straight line that's a little unnatural we don't want that additionally I'm going to go over the bottom a couple of times really build that up because there'll be a lot more light at the top than there will be at the bottom so we just naturally get more shadows down here. Then as that dissipates, I can move back up to the top and just finish that area. Now, yet again, we'll jump back to our filbert brush, grab some titanium white, work that over to the left-hand side of our initial mix, and we'll just create a brighter variant of that for our highlight on the top. So we still will use some Mars Black because we don't want it to be too saturated. We will use a little bit more of the Yellow Ochre, a little bit more of the Titanium White. And here you can see we have a nice, bright, warm green. A lot of sunlight on that, potentially. Now we'll switch to a liner brush for the first time. And this is a fantastic, sharp brush, wonderful for details. And while we're working on the background, we do still want some of those details. So I'll make sure that it's nice and damp, grab this pigment, head up towards the top. And then I'll go in with a nice little tapping motion. I'm not going to apply this over the entirety of our previous tree. We are being selective. We still want those darker portions to show through. But this is going to do a couple of things. It's going to add light to the top, which is something we needed. Light is coming down on these areas. It's going to make larger markings, which we also need. This is in the distance. We're not going to see a grand abundance of detail just wouldn't be natural. It'll build our depth and that light is coming down. It's going to create highlights on the leaves that do protrude and stick out. So we have the base layer of green, mid green, we have the shadow portions, and now we have the highlights which we are currently building. And you can see that starting to look more and more natural with what we add. That said, we are working with acrylics. It is semi-transparent and to really build it up in select areas to make some pop feel distinguished. We will need to go back in with a secondary application, another layer. And for that, we will probably also build the highlight a little bit. Now towards the bottom, I'm making my taps more sparse. I'm leaving larger portions open, and that way we get more of that darker detail showing through in an area where there won't really be an abundance of sunlight. So now yet again, we start at the top. We work in clusters, we work our way down. It's nice and subtle initially. 
We also get a lot faster at the process because we've done quite a bit of it in the adjacent opening. So yet again, taps that work their way down. Now we're not quite done with that section. We are yet again going to take titanium white, interject that into a previous mix, maybe a hint more of our yellow ochre, hint more of our sap green, not adding in any additional Mars black. You can see just how bright this is in relation to our last pigment and that, though it won't actually be this pigment on the canvas because our pigments are semi-transparent and we will see the darker pigment showing through it. So we are actively and intentionally making it brighter than it needs to be on the palette, recognizing that we are going to get a darker variant of it on the canvas. So here, I'm predominantly working over previously applied highlights and markings, creating clusters, trying to make sure that a lot of these are nice and sharp as well. As we proceed to do this, it's easy to get a little complacent and not ensure that we have a proper amount of pigment or that we have too much water. Water is great because it condenses the bristles, it makes them nice and sharp, we get that detail work. Typically, while it isn't relevant here, it allows us to blend for a longer period of time. However, it does make things more semi-transparent and you can get more of a washy application where your markings with a brush like this aren't as sharp as they would be if you were just working with pure pigment. So we are trying to be cognizant of that and build intelligently while still working cathartically. Again, looking for those pre-existing highlights, occasionally splashing it in a darker area, letting it dissipate as we get towards the bottom. You can see a big difference between this and this. Let's get you a little bit farther back. That way you can see what it'll be like from a bit of a distance because that's really important. Now, if you watch the channel regularly, you'll know why it's so important that we move the camera back and ensure that you are seeing the painting process from a bit of a distance. But if you're not, it's because often when we paint, we get really caught up in the details, every little marking, and we look at it not holistically, but again, we hyper-focus, which in a vacuum sounds great, right? It means every area gets a lot of attention to detail. We really care about all of it. But the issue is that we can build up certain areas to have more detail, more depth, more contrast, more saturation than what actually makes sense in the larger context of the painting. So that subject that you're working so hard on just doesn't fit with everything else. And you can make everything else fit around it, but then maybe you sacrifice the mood, the atmosphere, the impact of the painting, right? Maybe even taking away from the primary subjects. So when we take these steps back, we look at it more holistically. We can see what it'll look like in a room, because when you look at a painting in a room, you're not, you know, half a foot away from it. So it's an important step in the painting process. There we go. Now I say that, and then I immediately get you closer yet again, just because we are switching our color a little bit, going for an even brighter mix. Again, working with the previous, but not working in more Mars Black. And this is something I'm only going to apply towards the top where the light is really coming down. It is not in excess. And you can see that we're really building some volume. We have some canopying branches, foliage.
And now we can see a real difference between this side and this side yet again, right? That's one of the great parts about compartmentalizing subjects. We can always compare and contrast, see if we like the direction it's taking. And here I'm quite a fan. Now, the main primary visual is in this. I think what drew me to the piece and probably drew a lot of you to it, provided it's finished and works out well, is the willow trees, the weeping willow trees. These trees are not those. This is a different type of foliage, and having a mixed variety of trees and foliage in a painting can be great for keeping it a bit more interesting and the viewer engaged in the piece for a longer period of time. Now we need to continue working forward with our trees, but we're going to do so with the larger flat-headed brush and we're going to change our mix. As we move closer to us, it's going to progressively get more green and less yellow. So we'll make a new mix. Everything on here is dry, but I know that this was our initial mixture right there. So I need this with a little bit less yellow and we can make it slightly darker, it can be slightly more saturated. As we move into the foreground, we get more of the innate coloring, the innate values. I will interject a slight bit of that yellow ochre, but not a grand amount. And you can see that the difference in saturation is definitely getting there. We'll add just a bit more Mars black. And I think this is great. So from there, We'll apply our base layer, and I'm going to do this with the one inch this time, rather than what we did with the filbert. And I'm doing so just because it's a much larger area, though we will grab that filbert to instigate a lot of the detail. However, we do need multiple layers. You can see just how thin this is. And we can save a lot of time by just starting with this one. As you move up the tree, we can also make it slightly more yellow, maybe a little bit brighter, despite the fact that it's the base. And this is going to protrude in a lot of unique ways, so I'll just use that sharp end of the brush to get that pigment out there though the real detail work will be done with much more fine brushes. Right now we're just kind of charting the course for how this is going to evolve and progress. So there we go. First layer on there, nice and easy. Now second layer, we're not actually going to go to the darker mixture this time. I do want to make sure that this is a proper thick application, so instead, the second layer will be done with that same pigment, though we are switching back to the filbert because I want that general texture. And here you can see it's getting a little bit darker, we're getting more of the pigment that we have on the palette, where initially here we don't really have the color that we have on the palette, we have it with a lot of white because we have that white of the canvas showing through. You can do a base coat on the entirety of the canvas with a different color. With oils, I typically like to do that with a burnt sienna. And it gives it a very holistic, unified look. But here we have a lot of that light just working its way through and it looks quite nice. So we're working our way up. It's also worth noting that we would get more of the natural color from our palette if we let the initial base layer dry. Don't have to do that. But if you find it's just too thin, it's an easy way of making it happen.
Okay, so I've let it fully dry to the touch. Yet again, we're going to remix up a bit of our green, just like so. You can see we've color matched it fairly well. Smallest tint of the yellow ochre so that it's still cohesive and has that warmth. We switch to the filbert and from the bottom for the third time, we go in, we do the tap, we do the drag, gets a little more green, gets a little bit more of that same color that we have on our palette. I'm being a bit sparse with it as well. I'm not covering the entirety of the piece and it will dissipate as we get higher and higher. I want the top to be more of that yellow. So we'll just do it over to the left, work it out. And I think this is actually quite nice. Now from there, we do need to incorporate those shadows again. So we'll grab some Mars Black, work that beside our mixture and what we used for the shadows initially. These shadows are going to be darker, so we'll use less titanium white, but we still will use some. We'll use a hint of that yellow ochre. You can see that we've essentially remixed what we had before, but again, we do need it to be darker. Want it to be a bit more green, but we still want room to make it even darker as we move into the true foreground. So, we'll just brighten this up a little bit. And I think that right there is a great pigment to proceed with. So, I'll mix it out fairly consistently so that we don't pick up some portions that are more green, some that are more black. We'll grab our fan brush. We're not making this damp because if we do, it'll condense our bristles. Right now, we want them to be nice and sharp. Though later on, we will condense them. Now, while we're doing this, what are we trying to avoid? We talked about it when I first did the application over there. We need to think about that as I tap on these markings. We want to avoid applying the entirety of the brush like that and creating a straight line. We want to use our edges for the most part. We want to apply it predominantly towards the bottom. Let it dissipate as it works up. We want to create clusters. We want it to dissipate as we get towards the edges. We will be leaving some of these portions open. We want it nice and sharp. Applying very little pressure. The more pressure you apply, the more the brush will condense and create larger markings. There we go. Trying to make sure that the edge and the bottom is well applied. Now, while I didn't want this brush wet for the application process, I am cleaning it. That does mean applying water, but before we use it again, we will let it fully dry. With that, jumping back to the larger flathead brush, I'm also going to make sure that that's somewhat clean. We just don't want a lot of dark pigment on it and we'll start creating our next highlight. So much like we have our mid initial application here, our darker pigments there, we'll mix up our highlight right beside the initial highlight, just like so. We're using slightly less yellow. We're using about the same amount of Mars Black, if not a little bit less so that we can retain saturation and color. And you can see the difference right there. This also has room to be brightened, which is good. Switching to the filbert. No, <laughs> switching to the liner. 
we'll head on over to these edges and we can start doing these little taps. I'm rotating my brush in the air to create unique markings. We'll bring it inwards as well. But we want real detail work on the edges. With a brighter pigment than what we have in the body. And then despite the fact that we aren't working against the sky, in a very noticeable area, we will bring this application down here. And as we get into the darker areas, it does become more noticeable. I'm also very frequently going back to my palette for more pigment. Because as soon as we run out, it just starts to look like a messy application. We really don't want that. These are important details. And we're going to do our best to really respect them. And we respect them by making sure we have the right amount of paint, the right amount of water. You can see that we skipped a little area there because we have a drop off. So the, the light's coming down, it's touching the top, it's creating this nice canopy effect. And then underneath, there's an area that has shadows and it's not getting that same amount of light. So we're keeping that open and then this protrudes so then it gets light. But then the bottom area isn't really going to get much. Then we can move in a little bit. Just naturally following some of the highlights that we've established. But also following the already tapped on applications to the right hand side and we're just moving inwards again less noticeable towards the top because we already have a lighter base but that's okay we don't need a lot of contrast everywhere and you can see that the more we do the more natural it feels, the more it starts to come together, it's less messy. But there are definitely messy stages, and I really try to make note of that in these lessons. Really try to show you and verbally express when I feel like something's messy. Because that's just a part of the process, it's part of everybody's acrylic process, it's just how the medium works. And I don't ever want you to feel discouraged if and when yours feels messy, because that's just something that should be. It's our foundation. It's what we use to build. And it's not a bad thing at all. It's not a poor reflection on you. It's not a poor reflection on the painting. It's just part of the process. If anything, I think it's healthy in that it teaches us patience and do have faith in ourselves and that process, right? So, we're working through the messy stages. Here I'm trying to keep a lot of those darker pigments still noticeable. We have that larger opening. I like that a lot. We're also going to run some branches through this. So I'm trying to Think about the open areas in which those branches will be showing themselves. I have the reference photo that I'm working with that I can use to kind of predetermine portions of that. And if you are up over on Patreon, you'll also have the traceable, so you'll just be able to sketch out exactly where those branches should be. You don't have to worry about doing too many, too little, making them too thick, too thin. That will just be there for you to aid you in that drawing process. I know that a lot of people really enjoy painting, but they don't love drawing. And while I think both are important, I think that while they help each other, getting a perfect image on your canvas, I think sets you up with a lot of confidence to really excel and do well. 
And I'm also a big believer that even tracing, using traceables makes you a better sketcher because you can see how things are properly supposed to look rather than continuously repeating mistakes in the process. It gives you a better idea of what subjects actually look like. And then when you go to sketch them one day without a traceable or something of that nature, you'll just be a lot better at it. Just things to consider. Here you can see I'm doing a lot of jumping around. Having less towards the bottom. We'll continue working our way up, but to do so, we're going to make the mix brighter. Titanium white, yellow, green. We can see the original right there. And yes, this is a bit more yellow as we move towards the real highlights. So I'll grab that. And this is much more noticeable against our previous base. It doesn't have to be. Not everything needs an abundance of contrast, but it can be nice in the right scenario. There we go. Starting to create openings. Continuously going back to that palette for more pigment. We're very soon going to be into the actual willows and because of that, we want to make sure that we end strong with the trees that are not them. Right? We don't have too much left of this. We want to present it well. But you can see that there's a lot of light up here and then it dissipates as we start moving down. It's a really natural progression. And I'm making these markings more sparse as we get towards the bottom. More abundant towards the top. And they can also be more sparse towards the left because there will be greater amount of shadow over here. Don't like to do a lot of mixing with this brush because it doesn't pick up a lot of paint, but we can do a little bit for really nice highlights towards the top. These are much more area specific. We don't need a lot of them, so we don't need to mix a lot of paint for it. But these really are subjects where a lot of this layering helps them dramatically over time. There we go. Now, I was taking a couple of steps back to just look at it as a whole to see if I liked the amount of detail, the openings, but what I really came to the conclusion of, because this only had three layers and the initial ones were so bright and yellow, this tree as a whole ended up being more yellow than the one in the distance, and I wanted that one to be a little bit more yellow. So, I'm going to do a little correction here. You don't have to do this if you like the way yours is, and I would recommend you watching it in full before you proceed with it, because it is something that can take a little bit of practice. So I'm going to do a slight glaze over this. I'm going to take the larger flat-headed brush, a little bit of that yellow ochre, titanium white, make it nice and bright, 
Similar pigment to what we used for the highlight on this, except I'm going to take a lot of water on my brush repeatedly and thin out this pigment until the point where it is like watercolor. That said, I want it to be more yellow, want it to be a little bit more white. Adding the titanium white will thicken the pigment, which is slightly counterintuitive, but eventually we do get to something very, very thin. It drips on the palette. I'm going to apply it to the top initially. Blend down. You can see it over white portions of the canvas. This is going to change the hue to be a little bit more yellow, but it's also taking out a little bit of contrast with something I like for the background. Again, we want more contrast as we move towards the foreground. So this is just a quick and easy way to instill that. Simplifies it. I think that looks quite nice. Though, I do want to make the top slightly more dramatic. So, titanium white with the liner will mix up a pigment very similar to what we used for the highlight there. I'm going to paint this from a real distance, so you are quite far away, I am quite far away. We're just doing this towards the top, and this, again, isn't something you have to do if, in the initial application, the initial layering process, you ensure that this as a whole has more yellow in it and showing through than what we have over here. And I think they'll probably be pretty close. We could glaze this with a green, but I really like its hue and its transitions. So instead of focusing more on playing with the background, continuously going back, grabbing more, and I can tell I already prefer what it looks like now to what it looked like two minutes ago. That said, we do have to be careful with the glazing because it's one of those things where if you have too much pigment, not enough water, you do lose detail. If you have a lot of water, you can retain almost all of your detail, as we have here. If there's a little too much white or black, it can hinder the values a little too much. Again, I think we found the right mix, but that's why I noted, you should probably watch first gauge your comfort level with it. Maybe it's something you've done before and really enjoyed. Maybe you're new to it. It's also something I'd recommend if you are fully new to it, practicing on another canvas, perhaps a painting that you don't love, but it's just kind of sitting around and you thought, you know, someday I'll do something with this. Maybe you could try playing with the atmosphere, the cooler, warmer hues in it via a glaze. Typically it's used to enhance a color or move it a little bit, not necessarily change it entirely, so that's something to consider. Because the pigment will be quite thin. So let's get a little bit closer just for the tidying of the top. So here we are, a little bit closer. We'll just grab that bright highlight that we rendered, work it slightly above our previous markings, but then also bring it back down into them creating a good little transition of light. We have it essentially wrapping around our subjects, working its way down. I think it's turning out quite beautiful. Didn't take too much work to just rework it and I don't want to do too much detail because I don't want to take away from what we have here. So we'll leave that and we'll proceed into the branches. Okay, so now this is fully dried. We're going to take the flat headed brush and for the first time, grab a little bit of burnt umber, move that to a clean spot. 
grab an equal mixture of our Mars Black, which will take out a lot of the hue in it, and then we'll grab about a quarter of that in titanium white. As you can see, we're ending up with a gray, we'll interject a little bit more brown, we'll interject a little bit of green, because when you look at branches, typically they aren't actually just a brown, they have greens in them, they have yellows, they have other hues, and I'm actually going to make this mix very eclectic. So the right hand side of it is going to be a bit more burnt umber prominent, the bottom will be a little bit more sap green, the top will be maybe a bit more gray, but I'm trying to create a variety of mixes that I can grab from. Something nice and eclectic. We can even have a little bit of a yellow mix in there as well. So we have a lot of color. You can really see as I move my palette. We'll put that down. Grab our liner brush. I'll start by grabbing some of the gray. And I'm going to work this somewhat behind our foliage, portions of it. But then it re-emerges in other areas. And it can separate, work its way through, even find its way on the outskirts. I know you're quite far away, it's subtle, hard to see, and that's how it should be. Here, because it's much brighter at the top, this will be much more noticeable. I like that a lot. Our branches need to get smaller as they work upwards. I'm trying to create them with a lot of little markings. Because we don't want elongated applications. When they're very elongated, typically they look soft and unnatural. Also trying to diversify my branches by playing with the angles. So this one's much more steep than this one. But we definitely need portions that go to the left. Let's get you a little bit closer. There, so up close, I think that, that, and that are much more noticeable. Go and grab a mix of those pigments. I think we'll throw a branch right through here. You can see that I'm cutting through portions of the foliage and then it'll expand up this way. Very subtle. Grabbing a variety. This is an opening. And typically, I'm doing two things. I'm looking at my reference photo to figure out where they should be, but I'm also looking at the areas that have more shadow because those are exposed portions, right? That's where we can really see in, and therefore, that's where we see the skeleton of the tree and the branches. Now it's less noticeable in there because it's darker and we're applying a darker pigment, but subtlety is so valuable in painting. You can see how that works its way up. It'll be more noticeable towards the bottom. There we are. We can also take a little bit of it, maybe some of the less dark, more green portions, and incorporate just a little bit of it into the back here. I'm not going to do small branches, we're just kind of 
predominantly working with the larger bases making some really close to each other some farther away just trying to instill that diversity there we are and if you end up doing slightly too many branches fear not because you can just reincorporate foliage over those areas so it's not something where you have to worry about, oh, is it too much? Because it's really easy to walk back and cover up. Now we're going to briefly head down to the ground below our trees and we'll start that with some burnt umber. Smallest tint of Mars black, maybe a fifth of what we use for the burnt umber. We'll brighten it slightly, but we do want this to be our base layer and this layer is going to be quite dark. So, we'll just start applying this to this area that I've drawn out. It'll extend. It won't be a straight line. We want portions of it to protrude into the water. And then we can also just work it back diagonally into some portions of the greenery. Like that. Then I'll make sure it's a bit more thick. Extra applications and layers. We'll make a slightly brighter, but also more gray variant for the back ring. Just like so. Nice and easy. Then we'll take this brush, put it down, grab our liner. Make sure that it's nice and damp. Mix up a brighter variant that's a bit more burnt umber heavy than it is Mars Black because it's already fairly desaturated. And then I'm going to go in and I'll just tap what we'll call highlights despite the fact that it's not actually that bright. It's just a little bit brighter, it's a little bit more thick, it's a little bit more saturated than our previous application. Then we'll yet again make it brighter, make it more brown, head to our real edges of those applications, the areas that protrude, the areas that can catch more light, and I'll go in with these tapping effects yet again. Let them dissipate as we work our way back towards the trees. Just like that. Can do some in the background here too. It's all quite subtle at this point. Yet again. You notice that with almost all of this we're doing three layers minimum. Following that same rule, letting it dissipate. And we do want some greenery down here. So we can take our sap green Titanium white, a little bit of Mars black. And we can work in a couple little plants that can protrude, little bushes. They can work their way back into the rest but this is definitely an important step because otherwise we'll just have pigments that are too unique that don't really cohesively fit together. So the goal here is to add color from the top that doesn't make it look too messy 
overabundant. I think that's a good balance we're striking. And again, we can do slightly more back here. That said, it's just about time to start working on the water and some reflections because we have to do that before we do our trees as we want our trees and a lot of this foliage that's falling to be visually on top of it and it'll just be a lot easier of a painting process to prioritize the water and the reflections. Also, it's always just a lot of fun to paint reflections. So let's jump into that. On second thought, we're actually going to work on the larger tree on the left hand side first and then do the water just because I want to incorporate the reflection of it accurately. It does mean we'll have to touch up areas right down here a little bit later on, but that's fine. And with that, we're going to make the base layer for this darker than what we have in the past and more saturated. So we'll grab some Mars black and really what we're competing against we'll do it over here, is this. That was the mid color for that, the base layer initially. So this time we want something darker, we want something more saturated. We're still going to use titanium white, just not as much. We're still going to use green, just not as much. We are not going to use any of our yellow ochre though. So that is something that was reserved for the background, at least at this stage. Here we have a nice dark but deep green and we'll begin applying this just vertically, as you can see, with a lot of the applications prior to this. We weren't working truly vertically because we wanted the brush strokes to be more randomized just in case they showed up through our additional layers. Here, however, we want those brush strokes to appear going up and down, as that is going to be the general direction of our foliage. So, with this, we are just going to continue in this direction. If we have brush strokes, it's really not a bad thing. And I can tell that we do need more pigment on the palette. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish up this one little area right here. And as we move towards the right hand side, we move towards an area that receives more light. So we're actually going to brighten this just a little bit, not dramatically, not dramatically. We still want it to be darker just not as dark. So there we go. Yet again, marks up and down. When we apply pressure, we can really see the brush strokes. When we make it soft, they're less prominent. Just a, just a note on technique in general. Now when we get over here, we need to be a little bit more deliberate as we are working over previously applied areas. Doing little taps, drags, leaving some areas more open. But the tapping technique is really efficient here because it makes it look a little bit more natural. There we go. Now we're going to have some of this draping. So we'll have it proceed out with these initial strokes. And here, it will be ending essentially in front of where our water and our reflections will be. So, it doesn't have to be perfect. That is an area that will require a lot of additional attention later on. 
but you can see that this gets darker as we progressively move to the left and that's really what we want. That said, we should let this dry and then we can move on to our next step. All right, so our pigment has fully dried and now we're going to mix a darker variant of our shadow pigment. So it needs to be darker than this, it needs to be darker than what we have there. Much like our last mix, we are removing the addition of the yellow, still working with a little bit of titanium white, still working with our green or Mars black, and it doesn't have to be too dramatically different. Also, I want to still be able to make it darker because I want this tree to have the darkest portions. So we are going to progressively brighten it little bit by little bit so that it still has a ways to go. And I think that is actually a great mix. So we'll put down our brush. We'll pick up our fan brush yet again. We're not making it damp. We want these bristles to be nice and sharp so that we get a lot of markings and applications. Now with this, we used to rotate the brush for that type of tree, not with this one. Here, we are going to, much like with the flat-headed brush, exclusively work vertically. Well, I say exclusively, for the most part. There are going to be portions that are going to have slight bends, like that of what we've previously designated here as an area that slopes. And we'll just build some detail within this spot. And then eventually it does become vertical as well. Just like that. We can do another one right here. Now because we're tapping it in the way that we are, it's not going to make a big difference visually, especially in the end once we have our highlights built on top of it. But for the areas that do show through, we want them to make sense within the context of the rest of the painting, right? So we're just doing a lot of tapping. And I'll get you a little bit closer for the detail work. So here we are, a little bit closer, continuing to go in with those taps. And while I am working predominantly vertically, something I do want you to take note of is the fact that in this process, I jump around a lot. I'm continuously trying to change my application, if not through minor steps and details. While I rotate the brush on trees like this, over here, something I like to do is I'll tap with the bottom third of the brush, and then I might tap with the top, and then maybe I go in with a little bit of the middle, but I'm not pressing in with the middle, because I'm not trying to expand the bristles and get that rounded application we were talking about avoiding earlier in the lesson. And, here I think we can do another dip of foliage, create another awning of sorts. Just protrudes out and then finds its way working downwards. Now, the more we do with this, the more the bristles start to condense. You can see it just a little bit there. That's something we need to be mindful of, be cognizant of. Because if it condenses a lot, then eventually we don't have these sharp details, right? And if it does condense to a great deal, what you need to do is clean your brush, use water, wipe it off, and then once it's fully dry, you come back and you do more of it. But we need those bristles nice and sharp to get these details. Also, I'm going to pick certain areas and add extra shadows so this area can be a bit darker, this area can be a bit darker. You can see these lines that stick out. We're going to do a bit more on the edge to create more of a vignetting effect. This will eventually inevitably lead to slightly less detail in certain portions, it's okay. 
Losing detail doesn't mean losing realism. In realism, a lot of detail is lost, simply because of shadows. So let's move down and just complete this layer. So we don't have too, too much left to do here, but as you can see, there is a very thin area, and that is fantastic for making these details pop. So I felt like we should start there, where we know that they'll be truly impactful. And much like every other process, the more we do this, the more comfortable we get with it, the faster we are. Though we can become complacent with our general thoughts towards it, as different areas will require slightly different taps, and it is our job to discern which taps those are to best visually render the subject, right? There we go. All right, so all of our pigment has fully dried, and then as you can see, I've gone in and I've just drawn some of the draping areas which we're going to paint our highlights in. I used Conte to do so. It's essentially just a colored chalk, but great for just little detailed drawings. You add a little bit of water to the canvas, comes right off. So I like to do that with my drawing after I already have acrylic on the canvas. That said, we're going to start by mixing our pigment for the little strands. They essentially look like string that bind all of the little pieces of foliage to the draping portions of the tree. And we're going to take our flathead brush. We are going to use some of our yellow, about an equal mixture, maybe a little bit less of our sap green. We'll create something nice and warm, something that will stand out from the rest of the greenery, a little bit of titanium white, a little bit of Mars black. We don't want this initial application to be too bright because we're working on such a dark background that regardless of if it's a bright value or a mid value, it's still going to stand out dramatically. With that, we'll put our large brush down, done our mixing, we'll switch back over to the liner, make sure it's nice and damp. Wipe off the excess, grab some pigment. I'm going to take my pinky finger, use it to ground my hand to eliminate shake. And I'll just start drawing on some of these markings. We're going to frequently go back for water to make sure that these are in fact nice and sharp and that they remain this way. You don't have to get it directly on the drawing if you use Conte because you can just take it off so easily. If you find a way to make it better in this drawing process, because that's essentially what we're doing right now. We're almost drawing. You can see that I'm moving the entirety of my hand down to apply these. I'm not just trying to move my wrist. You get a much more smooth marking this way. Trying not to apply much pressure with our hand. Also, do you really like the hue that we found here? I think it works quite well. I have quite a few of them over here. But because the mid value was made to be brighter, this isn't going to stand out to such a degree. And that's okay. There are a number of areas where it really will. And then I'll have those nice subtle areas to essentially just visually back it up, reinforce the idea of the subject without it getting overly complicated. We're almost done this process, though we will be going back and doing more a little bit later. There we go. Now, I'm going to take this brush, put it aside, 
for the time being. We'll grab our larger flat, take off the yellow ochre. We'll mix up a similar pigment to this, but we will abstain from the yellow ochre. So similar amounts of Mars black and titanium white. This time we're just using an excess of green over the yellow. And we're starting off with not a really bright green. You can see it in relation to everything else. Somewhat subtle even. Put that down. Pick up the fan brush and this has had time to dry. So we'll grab our pigment. And then we'll start tapping this down along the edges of our pre-existing markings. And then we can also fill in some of the negative space in between them if we feel like it'll be a very full area. Now this is just layer number one of this application and technique. We will make it brighter, we will make it pop to a greater degree. So don't feel like you have to overcompensate and make it all look perfect right now. This is something that will be built up in and over time. Trying to get it on both sides of the brush. Not applying much pressure here. When the strand is moving fully vertically down, I like to apply the taps to both sides of it, left and right hand side. But when it's curving, I like to just paint right under it with the taps. So our application style varies, not dramatically, but it does vary. In really dense areas, I may also apply a much larger number of taps, which will eventually relinquish some level of detail, but that's okay because we can re-interject that detail later on with our more highlighted pigments. And this will, in those scenarios, become more of a base than it does a detailed highlight. Where right now, because it's the brightest pigment in the subject, it is the highlight, but long term, that won't be its role. Now, as very recently noted, we are going to build up our highlight. So we'll interject the extra titanium white, we'll give it the saturation back with more of our green, darken it slightly so that we can continue building. Though remember, we're not actually going to get this pigment. We're going to get a mixture of it and what we already have on the canvas. With this, we're going to predominantly apply it, initially at least, towards the tops. So the areas that are a bit more curved. And then we can start moving down. But with this, we're essentially just thinking about where the light is hitting. Over here we have a lot of light, it's very open. So towards the right hand side we'll get more of this. And you can see how it's starting to build. Starting to look nice. Starting to have some depth. Just took a little time and patience. Here we're going with a bit of a curved application. Don't want to do too much over here because I don't want to bring the eye so much over to the left hand side. I want it to be a bit more vignetted, but I will tap the occasional bit of highlight into these portions just so that it feels natural. Then we move over here. I want this area to be a bit darker, so I'm going to wait until I have less pigment on my brush to approach that. So it's a more semi-transparent and we can do it now. You can see, less dramatic. Still get that same idea, still get that same texture, but it doesn't pop to the same extent of every other 
spot. Then we're going to need quite a bit up here. But I think we'll need to move the camera so that you can see all of that. So as we pull back, I think it's quite evident just how different this texture makes a lot of this look in a good way. So we'll continue to add more. Working it down, changing the way in which I hold my brush and press that pressure into the canvas. We get more highlight towards the right hand side so it'll be a bit more full which means we'll get slightly less contrast. You can see that this area as a whole is less dark than what we have over towards the left hand side. Need some nice thick applications here to make sure that it's as prominent as it needs to be to stand out against the backing greens. We'll also bring a bit of it out like that. And I think that's a, a really nice look. Probably drape the entirety of the top to a point, leaving slight openings. Go back here, continue to build. If we apply it over the same area twice, it will look brighter because our new base, essentially, is brighter. Then we have quite a few to the left, but I'm slowly moving this way, allowing the paint to dissipate, so as we get to the corner, it's not as opaque. And then when I have almost no paint left on the brush, I can fill in some of the other negative space with those taps, make it feel nice and cohesive. Right? We'll put that brush down, pick up the larger flat. What do you think we're doing? We're making it brighter. Far too bright. <laughs> Get some Mars black, work that in. A little more green. Little more Mars black. I think that's a good pigment to try. In the very least, it'll work on the hard right hand side. So we'll start there. See how far in we can move it. Also, you do want to ensure that the pigment underneath that you just applied is fully dry so that it doesn't blend and become messy with what we are now putting on there. There we go. Now we can feel the light wrapping around. It's a great look. Do a little bit over here. Not as much. Maybe some hints towards the top of these draping portions. The occasional piece that sticks out and shines. You know what? I think we can go even brighter. Let's do that. Put our brush down. Titanium white. Sap green. We'll leave that there just so we can see it in relation to the last mix. We test on that right hand side. That's beautiful. 
We likely don't go any brighter than this, but I think this is a great highlight. We just do little little taps in other areas. Not many. Not enough to really build it. But enough to make it feel like it fits. There we go. And if you want a very specific area, we can always go back to the liner. Tap in individual little pieces. We want to do the majority of it with the fan brush so that we get that nice randomized look. But then we can accentuate our favorite areas intentionally through this process. Trying to move my hand a lot so that we don't hyper focus on a singular area. And we drew in all of those lines, a lot of them were lost. We can recreate them. I might make this mix slightly brighter than what we had previously. But we have our previous mix right there, so it's easy to find. I like that a lot. Grab it, very watery brush. Reinterject some of the spines. Just have some dropping. This will really show up best in the negative space, in the darker portions. We don't want too many, but just enough to designate form in areas where it might be a little ambiguous. There we go. Now we'll head down low and paint in a nice little patch of land. We'll grab some Mars Black, a little bit of that burnt umber for the initial mix, titanium white, create something nice and dark. And here is essentially why I was thinking we should paint the water first, because we have to work around all of these areas, but I think we'll actually just paint on top of them and then repaint them later on. But here, we're just painting in a fairly neutral, earthy ground, which we will put greenery on top of once it's dry. And then once this is applied, then we can work on our actual reflection. So, good little start there. We don't need to add any highlight to it or change the hue in the way that we did what we did here because we're going to cover almost the entirety of it. So we'll let that dry and then we'll come back and do some embellishments. Okay, so things are dry and we can proceed to add some greenery. I'm going to create the mix using the flat headed brush. We're going to go for a darker green initially, but we're going to keep it saturated. So not too much titanium white. We are going to switch to the fan brush And we can just tap on some nice subtle grass. But we're not just doing a tap, we're doing a little bit of a tap and a drag down. You can see little bits of the brown showing through, which is actually a good thing. Now we'll brighten our mixture. A little bit of extra titanium white, a little bit of extra green. Maybe not that much. 
There we go. Also, we typically mix these to be perfectly cohesive here. You don't have to, it can look a little different. Different portions of it, some can be darker, some can be lighter. And that'll just make the grass look more unique. But here, doing more of that tap and drag effect. Leaving openings in some portions, but less in others. We're also going to go in varying directions. So sometimes it'll sway this way. For the most part, it's going that way. And we're just doing that because it's a leading line that pushes the eye into the painting. But we can also do a couple in the other direction just to make it feel nice and natural. There we go. Still not done. Grabbing our brush, making it brighter, making it more green. We'll grab this. There we go. That's really pretty. That said, because we are doing the reflection later, we're probably going to cover portions of the top and bottom of this by accident. So we will go back and touch up a number of portions later on. But it's good to have this base the way we do. So for now, I think that works well. We'll also take our liner brush, grab a little bit of Burnt Umber, Mars Black, Titanium White, create a dark earthy mix. Throw in a couple little rocks. Create a highlight for said rocks. Put that on the right hand side. A little bit of a blend backwards. And just make it look a little bit more interesting, right? And just darker ones scattered throughout. And it's the eclectic look that I think will really create the best end result. Now we will start the reflections and I'm going to begin in the back then work our way forward. So for this, we want to mix a green similar to what we have in the darker base there. So we'll start with our sap green. Everything here on the palette has dried, so I'm not worried about it mixing, but we can blend on top just to see how it is in relation to our other older pigments. Now this one, because it is a bit farther back, we want it to be a bit more desaturated. So I'm adding more Mars Black and Titanium White than what I was doing here, rather than the Sap Green. We'll do a little test, make sure that it's cohesive with what we have in that general vicinity. I think it could be slightly more desaturated. So a little bit more Mars Black, a little bit more Titanium White. Do another little test, and I think that's great. So, from there, I'll start by just doing a sharp horizontal line, and it isn't straight, it has a little bit of a bend to it, across, and then I'll take it, and I'll start dragging downwards, like so. And we don't want a hard edge at the bottom, we want it to progressively get softer. Then we'll make it brighter. So extra titanium white, a little bit of our yellow ochre, sap green. This is definitely too bright. Darken it, do a little test. Apply that right under. Initially not letting them touch because I don't want the blend to happen too early. Do a soft blend down here. And then we can work the two together in vertical strokes, as you can see. 
And I'm actually trying to let some of those strokes show through. That way it looks like there's a bit of a blend in the pigment. Now we'll go to something a bit brighter. Slightly more saturated, but not much. You can see that we're just applying that to the tops here. And then just a little flick of the wrist upwards. Typically reflections are darker than that of what they are reflecting. So I'm trying to keep that in mind. And then we have it just fade off into the bottom. Now we'll move to this one and it's going to get darker in that base layer because we did increase the amount of Mars black we used, we decreased the amount of titanium white, the amount of gray that we have as we progress forward. We still have, have some, but it's not as much. And we do want this to be a little bit darker than what we have down here. Again, we go for our test. I think that looks quite good. Maybe slightly more Mars black, slightly more titanium white. Again, just desaturating, much like we did with the last pigment. Little test, that's just right. So, now, yet again, I cut along the bottom. We'll drag down. Move the brush at its angle so we can work in between a lot of this greenery. And this is why I went back and forth about do we paint this first, do we paint that first. Does mean we'll have to touch this up, but that's fine. We're doing another tree. We'll be in the motion and the habit anyway. So we'll just follow through. Easy. Nice and easy. Now we'll make it brighter. Green, titanium white, a little bit of yellow ochre. Do a little test. I think that looks quite good. We work it across, for the most part, avoiding the initial application. And this is going to go fairly far down. And it's going to go through here too, because you have this opening. There we go. Now we'll do our blend. We can blend up or we can blend down. I'm going to do both. Clean up this area a little bit. This is getting messy over here, that's okay. Won't be hard to fix later. Now, yet again, we brighten the bottom and we add a bit more of that yellow ochre. Recognizing that the pigment we're currently mixing is not going to be this pigment, but rather an amalgamation of what's already on the canvas and it. Here we do our drag ups. Fairly good. Brighten again. Place an abundance of it at the bottom. And then I start the blend. You can see there are small inconsistencies in it, and I like that a lot. That's something we actually want. because there are so many inconsistencies in the clusters of foliage, right? And again, this is darker than that, which is good, but it does need to be slightly brighter yet again, because the top of this tree is brighter than the top of this tree, and these two look very similar right now. 
This mix might be a little too titanium white heavy. Maybe it could be a little bit more of the yellow ochre heavy. You know what? No, I like that a lot. Maybe we'll try? Doesn't hurt to try. If we don't like it, we can always go back. You know what? I like that. I like that a lot. We can do a hint of it over here. Keep it cohesive. We're really stretching into where the brighter portion of the sky is, but that's okay. And I'm just going to soften a lot of these blends. More white, more yellow, more white. Doing a bit of a dry brush over here. And I think that's great. Now we'll move over to this side where it gets significantly darker again. Sap green, Mars black, less titanium white than what we've used previously. We're getting into a truly dark pigment here. There we go. Now you can see that the reflection of this actually only goes to about here. So what I'm going to have to do is paint this brighter pigment back in. Also we'll take this opportunity to do a little bit of the base layer for this again. And then with that comes the reflection down here. We also have the reflection of that. It's a bit closer so we can see the reflections to be a bit sharper. There we go. Like that a lot. Grab the brighter pigment. Work that. Still going for the vertical strokes, not trying to mirror it exactly. This water is running to a point. Then we need to create the reflection of this little piece of land. So we'll do the darker mixture. Maybe a little bit less dark. Just like that. Then we'll grab a bit of mid-value highlight for it. Just like so. We'll also grab our burnt umber, Mars black, titanium white, Mix up a darker color than what we used in the ground back here. And we'll just do a little bit of it. Relieving pressure as we move the brush down. That way it gets softer. We can do a hint of it in the back. Not too much though. So now we need to paint this area, but I need to make sure that this is entirely dry. We're going back to blues and we don't want them to turn into more greens. So we'll let that dry. We'll clean our brush, our water very well, and then we'll head back in with the cerulean blue mix and start adding a bit of movement to the water. Okay, so our pigment is fully dry to the touch. Our brush and water are clean and we can grab some of our cerulean blue. Titanium white, make sure you grab from an area that isn't diluted. 
So I'll just move over to the side there. We'll need a hint of Mars Black also picking from an area that isn't diluted, taking off the excess. And we'll just mix that up. Now, we'll head over here and I'll start by just cutting along the edge of our eventual land. And then I'm going to move the brush on a slight angle this way. And I'm going to cut into the green applied areas. And I'm looking at the top and trying to essentially mirror a lot of those movements. So there's a dip between this tree and this collection of trees and then they shoot out a little bit. So I'm trying to capture that. Just using the corner for these tighter areas. And then we start to work up and then there's a dip in. But then it moves back out. Like so. We need to make sure that we have a good thick application. So we'll go back, we'll do another layer, we'll use additional paint. You'll really be able to see the difference as we build it up. Again, just using the corner of the brush so we get into these more tight areas and we will switch our brush very shortly. Occasionally I am working vertically, but then I switch back to horizontal for the movement of the water. Like so. Now we're going to take this brush, we'll put it down and we'll switch for the first time over to our smaller flat headed brush. This also comes in the brush set brush set of five. This one is great for detail work, but it can still hold a lot of paint. It's still good for mixing. And with this one, we're going to clean up some of those sharper markings. Make sure they're nice and thick. But on top of that, we're going to start working in ones slightly throughout because the water is moving we're going to have essentially visual anomalies within that which is being reflected. And sometimes they'll be a bit more opaque, sometimes you'll make them more thin. But you can see that the more layering we do, the cleaner it starts to look. So it dips in, works down. This area needs some extra paint. There we are. Wetting my brush. When I have these areas that are kind of on the outskirts, I like to make the middle of them bit more thick and then it gets softer towards the outer portion. We get farther away from here you can see that my applications are more transparent. That's just done by using less water or rather by using more water, less paint and letting it dissipate. So, once that looks fairly natural, and we're happy with it, I'm just going to take my brush, line it up towards the bottom, make sure that it's even, and I can tell that it needs to be a little bit more to the left. So we'll just move a lot of this over. And while we're here, we'll thicken this pigment. There we 
we go. I think that looks even better. Now, we're essentially done with this pigment, so we can go back to the yellow and, oh my, <laughs> little notification there. Uh, yellow and our green or titanium white, a little bit of Mars black. It's, um, it's pretty late. I guess you can see outside, but getting a little tired, a little sleepy. And uh, apparently, the jump scares can get me. <laughs> okay, so we'll make this uh, a little bit darker. Try to get a color akin to what we have here. We can just interject some of those movements in the water like that. So same technique as the blue, utilizing pigments that already exist within the space. They'll be bigger, closer to us. And then as we get farther away, they get smaller. And I'll just do little hints of them. This is just showing a little bit of movement in the reflection. Much more noticeable up here. It's got a more yellow variant. Making sure we dodge the area of the titanium white that has the blue in it. And we can rework different areas of the darker ones should we want or just establish new movements. I'm doing a little bit of both. Not doing any towards the far farther portions just because we won't really see them at that distance. Kind of just stopping here with very small semi-transparent markings, applying slightly more pressure as we move up. You can see the difference more dramatically against this area because it's going to be darker. And then it essentially blends in quite well with what we have going on in here. But we just have some good little detail. Now I think we'll switch to the liner brush. Make sure it's nice and damp. Don't need too much paint so we can do our blending with it. We'll make a muted greenish yellow. Not too bright, not too dark. Something that's brighter than what we have on here though. Then we can tap on little fallen bits of foliage. They'll get larger as we move towards us. This will give us some nice detail. And we can slowly, progressively add them on so it doesn't become an overwhelming subject. We can also start with this more muted pigment and then build it to be something brighter should we want to. I think in the best case scenario there are portions that are still like this but then there are also brighter ones. It's the combination of the two that I think will really work well. And these can also exist 
in here. Much larger, so I'm applying more pressure with the brush. Can even shape them like leaves. Don't want to do too, too many towards that edge because I don't want to draw the eye dramatically that way. There we go. Now let's make a brighter variant. Extra titanium white. Extra water to condense our bristles. Pick some of our favorites, make them brighter. This will also stand out against the mid yellow that we've established, which means we can include them in more areas, which is nice. Some will be in the shadow and they can be a bit darker, so we won't highlight these. For the most part, might just throw a little bit of highlight on them, so they're three-dimensional, but not the entirety of them. And this area could definitely use a bit more. We have some clusters. Okay, now we'll take a couple of steps back. I think that these could honestly be a bit brighter, but I don't want to impose that contrast until we have this tree worked in. So for now, we'll leave it like that. We will switch back to the larger flat headed brush and we'll start mixing up a new pigment, starting with titanium white, about half that, in Mars Black, it'll render a fairly neutral gray. Then we'll interject a little bit of our Burnt Umber, hint of our Sapa Green, a little more Burnt Umber. And this will make a nice earthy stone cement-esque look. And I'm going to use it to incorporate our little bit of person-made architecture, which in this painting's case is very simply, literally, just a essentially lip separating the land from the water. So hypothetically there's a little bit of a drop off here and then we get into that. Now I'm trying to make it fairly straight but it doesn't have to be perfect. I want it to still feel organic to a point. So I'm sharpening the edges fairly watered down pigment. That way I can just cut along nice and clean. Like so. Now I'll make it slightly darker. Just add that Mars black in. And here we have the dip on the side that we can see. So this too is like a lip. It's just not receiving the same amount of light as the top. It's the same subject. It, in theory, is the same hue. It has the same values. But because the light isn't hitting it, it's just going to look a bit darker.
I think we'll make it slightly larger. It's very easy to make smaller with the application of the ground, so we get to kind of play with it a bit till we have something that we really like. I think I like that size. But now I want to go back up to this top area and make it maybe a little bit brighter. So we have our green, a lot more of our burnt umber than green. Still need some Mars black. Here this is very similar. Not a bad thing, we did need to do multiple layers anyway. Now more titanium white. Maybe slightly more burnt umber. Building it in, not quickly. If we get a little bit of the canvas tooth in there, that's actually nice. Give it a good stone texture. Though it isn't necessary. Painting on a little bit of an angle, so it's somewhat hard to get it straight, but you can just use painter's tape if you'd like. Or a ruler. Or you can actually just sketch it on beforehand using the traceable. Which again you can find up over on Patreon. Notice I've gone back and adjusted that numerous times, just slowly getting it the way we want it to be. We take our time, we readjust, that's how we get to the paintings we really want. Here I'll just add a little bit of this slightly different hue throughout, just so it's a bit more unique. Then we will get a much darker grayish brown. We'll run that right behind the darker lip. And we'll have that proceed all the way to the bottom of the canvas. I'm going to do another layer. Like everything else, make it nice and thick. It can be a little bit darker, closer to that lip, because that will cast a tiny shadow. And then it can get brighter as it moves this way, just minorly. And we just have a soft shadow, so I'm not applying much pressure with my brush. Now we can add grass here, we can have fallen foliage, we can really do a lot with that, but I think I'm going to wait until we've established more of the larger tree so we know how much detail we want to interject. With that, I'm going to start the base with an abundance of Mars Black, equal amount, if not slightly more, sap green, smallest hint of titanium white to begin with. We want this to be a pigment that can get darker, but we also want it to be very heavily saturated. So we can't have too much Mars Black and titanium white together. We need an abundance of the sap green. We just can't have it get too, too dark because we want to incorporate the shadows on top of it still. I think that's going to be pretty perfect. So, from here, let's start tapping on this foreground. I'm starting, as you can see, with the edge that touches the water. This is the most important part as it's going to be the most seen. 
with my applications, a lot of it is a singular tap. Occasionally there's a drag, but I really like the aesthetic, the look of the individual tap, the edge of it. Typically looks eclectic in texture and pattern, which is really good. And before I proceed too much with that, I think I'm actually going to grab my reference photo and just sketch that back in. So I'm going to use the remainder of the paint that I have on my brush and that which I have on my palette right here. And I'll just fill in the known area, which is the open area of canvas. Also getting the edge a little bit there so it's nice and clean. This is another portion where if we get some brush stroke in there, it's actually quite nice. And we can have the foliage kind of fall to the ground and then pan outwards and drape like cloth. And the brush strokes can show that as well. Now again, I'm not doing too, too much here. I do want to sketch it back in. I'll probably use Conte to do so. but. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, I've just lightly sketched in the foliage yet again. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of extra titanium white and a little bit of extra sap green as we continue to move up here because like we talked about with these trees, the tops will be a little bit brighter in general. And this is an easy way of beginning to instigate that. Now I did add some water to my brush between our last application and now, which as you can see made the pigment a lot more thin. Look at that in relation to that. That isn't brighter to this extent because we added the titanium white and the extra green gold. It is this bright because the paint is now thin. So, just something to consider. I'm fine with it because I like doing additional layers. I think it makes the paintings a lot better, but it does mean you will have to do additional layers. So, that is the cost of getting very sharp markings should you want them. And I think we do here. Okay, we'll continue this down. I could actually go down a lot farther, but I'm going to keep it a little bit higher just for this application. We'll see if we like it, we'll see if it needs to be higher. We're leaving openings now. That's why we painted the patches of blue back in the beginning of the painting. There we are. So I'm just slowly working my way around them. Tap and day hold is a great way. Getting that nice unique marking. Here, I have more paint than water, so it's a bit darker again. As I expand the brush, we push the paint out, it gets more thin. Trying to make sure that the openings start and end at different points. Also this opening is far too large. So we'll slowly close that gap, make it a bit more unique. Continue to work this down, cover the white of the canvas. Much better. I do like the visual texture that we see through the thin pigment. Something we can definitely mirror as we continue to layer. 
and we will certainly continue to layer. Have a nice opening through there. This one is larger than this. It's higher both here and here. Now I'm making this higher than this one and I'll probably make it wider looking to create a unique shape in relation to the ones that we've already created. And then filling in this top portion. You can see that as I try to paint over the darker portion, it doesn't actually make it really brighter. And that's again because we just have the more thin pigment. It's not because the pigment is brighter. Instead, I will mix up more paint. Here going in something a bit too dark there, overcompensated a little bit. This is much more thick because we didn't go back and grab extra water. I'm going to put this predominantly in the middle portions of the larger clusters, leaving the edges slightly semi-transparent and brighter because that's where the light will work through. And this will just start building a minor amount of depth, but we don't want it to be too dark because again, we still want that shadow pigment over it. And you know what? I think I want to thicken, thicken this a bit. So I'll close that gap to a point. Now we have different openings. It's much more unique. Close that one a little bit. There we go. Much better. Continue these applications down here. Love that look. You know, it's getting, uh, I think, pretty close to two in the morning, but hard to put down the brush. Really enjoying this. There we are. I think this almost looks like it has a bit of a lean this way. I'm going to fix that. And it's predominantly, I think, because I'm painting on an angle as to not get in the way of the camera. So you shouldn't really have that issue. I'll make sure that it's straight in the reference photo or in the in the traceable. There we are. Very good. Much better. So we'll let this dry and then we'll head back with some texture and some detail. Great. So that's fully dry. Now, as we've done before, we'll take Quite a bit of our Mars Black, move that to a fairly clean spot on our palette, grab a hint of our Sap Green, even less Titanium White, we want this to be our darkest pigment in the entirety of the painting. We still want it to have a slight green hue to it, but not in any real abundance. We'll take the majority of the pigment off of our brush, put that down, switch over as I'm sure you know, to our fan brush. Grab a little bit on both sides and we'll start tapping in that shadow, the texture. The majority of these taps should start in the center and then they can work their way out to a degree. Remember, we're not dipping this in water. We can in a little bit, but not quite yet, because we don't want our bristles to condense at this point. We want as many little markings as we can get. And we're typically not pressing the entirety of the brush into the canvas. We're just picking a third of it, and then we may rotate the brush, 
back and forth, applying different portions. So here we are, a little bit closer, just so you can see the detail of the texture. Being quite careful with it. Towards the edges, we aim for less clusters, more individual markings. And then as we get towards the center here, we can make those taps much more close together, even creating more simple negative space. Not every area needs these, by the way, especially in the brighter portions. They stand out to a much greater degree, so we can do less of them. I will want more though towards the top right hand corner so we can create a slight vignette. As a lot of you know, if you've watched these lessons for a while, the eye typically does go to the brightest point in any piece. So if we can make the edges as a whole darker, we can subconsciously help move the viewer's eye towards the center or your main subject. So we're just trying to be cognizant of all of those little techniques we can incorporate to engage the viewer. It's one of those cathartic processes where you can just keep going. I like to bounce around. That way I don't do too much in any one area or establish a noticeable pattern. Typically moving does give you that hard reset, which is good. And then again, more towards the actual edge. And we'll just work that down to the bottom. So, here, for the most part it's simple, right? We're working in vertical taps, but as we get towards that draping portion, we are going to change the orientation of the brush to follow said drape. So you can see we're moving on an angle and then it's almost horizontal. As we run out of pigment, we can also take this and just apply a little bit of texture into some of the more shadow oriented areas of the stone. We can also do a little bit in the sand. But this is when we have almost no pigment left. And then, we of course do need to let this dry so that we can go back in with some highlights. Now, because we are essentially done with the darker hue for this portion, we are going to clean the brush well now. Making it wet will condense the bristles. You can dry it so that you can use it right after, but we don't want to let it dry with all of this dark pigment and we don't want this dark pigment to blend in with the lighter pigment we are about to use. So, fun update. I actually went to bed and it is the next night. So we are well rested and ready to get back to some painting. Uh, we'll jump back here. It is of course dry. We have the larger flat-headed brush and we'll start working on some highlights. Though something I noticed in the reference photo, the majority of this is well lit, which I think we're actually not going to do here. Instead, I think we'll have the majority of the light working its way this way. We already have the majority of the highlights on the right-hand side of this tree. So 
we'll just continue doing so. We'll leave some harsher shadows in here. That'll give us a greater contrast. It'll make that pop to a better extent. It'll give us some visual diversity between these to a degree, which I definitely like. And I think that it'll just incorporate a lot more dimension to the piece. So with that, we will start creating our new mix. We're going to grab our green gold, a little bit of our titanium white, just like so. Smallest hint of our Mars black. We really don't want to gray down the pigment. We don't want to desaturate it much at this point. We are very close to the foreground. We can have those more vibrant colors showing through. So we mix that up, we switch to our fully dry fan brush. And here, I'm going to initially apply this in two areas. One, towards the right hand side of these dangling pieces of foliage. And then the second place is just on the left hand side to a slightly lesser degree. So I'm starting on the right hand side. That way, when we have the majority of the pigment, we can incorporate it well. We can do that with the openings here as well. Right hand side of all of them. It's a bit brighter, that light is leaking through. And then I work my way back and down as it starts to dissipate a little bit. The more openings we have, the more opportunities we have for these applications. And I think I'll get you a bit closer so you can see the detail a bit better. Here we are, much closer, grabbing that pigment. We'll go in, do another layer through here. Just build that up a bit. Get some extra texture and detail. Have it continue to wrap around. Get the other side. Because the light will hit both sides, it'll just be more so slightly on the right hand portion. Going over those openings. And you can see it slowly start to come together. Trying to make a lot of these taps unique. So we'll also splash some into the negative space, not to a grand degree. We don't want too, too many, but there will be slight openings in this area. There will be more thin portions and in those scenarios, that light will leak through, right? Do a bit more towards the side there. Let me slowly build it up and out. You can apply slightly more pressure with this tree than you did with the ones in the past because as we get closer, all of these little pieces will appear larger just because of perspective. You can also now for the very first time, if you'd like to with this brush, make it damp and then come back into it. That will naturally bunch the bristles and make those larger markings. Something we typically intend to avoid when we need them to be really small, but we don't here. And we have been incorporating these small ones so we can just add extra variance. In fact, I'll do that right now. So I'm adding water. You can see that it's condensing. We'll add a little bit more water, wipe off the excess, condensing. And now when I go in for those taps, there are less of them and they're larger which is great for this part of the painting. Now I will note most fan brushes aren't like that. Most fan brushes are 
stiff or soft and the stiff ones won't typically condense in a really natural way. This was a, a custom brush that we worked hard on getting just right from my brush set collaboration with Craftamo. And I really love how that turned out. Again, it's easy. We used to do these portions of the painting with two different fan brushes. One was stiff, one was soft. And I'd have to bounce back and forth between the two, but now I can just use this one and I get the large markings when I want, I get the smaller markings when I want. It's a natural cluster. But if you're working with regular fan brushes and not this one, then you can just do this portion with a soft one and the previous with a more stiff bristle. You can see that that portion here is still quite dark. I'm going to try to leave the side over here that way to a real extent. You can see just how large those are. I love that. I think that looks really good. I think we'll make some of these just a bit larger. There we go. Make it bit softer as we move towards the right, as we run out of pigment. Feels well textured. Going over these areas a couple of times to build it up. Start making strands essentially within there. And then I'll just work it down and I'll move the camera down as well. Now, I do like the idea of as we get down towards the bottom, it gets darker as a whole because we have more light towards the top, towards the bottom we get more shadow, especially from pieces like this which protrude. So, we'll be careful to not overdo it, but our application will change as we get towards here because we need these to start working their way outwards, right? We need that progressive change. And it's nice and notable because the markings are a bit larger right now. Not doing too, too much but enough to establish how it's meeting the bottom and then it gets a little bit brighter, especially towards here because that's actually facing the light, right? And then as you wrap around, it should get darker. So we'll just paint that on a little bit more meticulously. Very good. Now, I think what we'll do is we'll take a little break from those highlights, clean this brush off, don't have to worry about getting it wet because their applications are larger anyway. We'll just make sure this is still nice and wet. If it isn't, we'll mix more, but I'm just interjecting a little bit of water into the mix to keep it wet longer. Switching over to my smaller liner brush, making sure that's nice and damp. Then we can throw in some little strands of grass. Don't have to do too many. Trying to make them nice and thin, not applying much pressure. Also not trying to cover all of the earthy hue that we've added. This is just to aid it just to bring it to a cohesive place with the greenery that we have here. 
The areas that are right underneath the shadow should be a little bit darker. They can be brighter as you move outwards. Get a bit of a darker mix as well. So Mars black, green gold, a little bit of titanium white. Let's get darker. We're going over previous pieces of grass, overlapping, just making it a bit more interesting. You can also add flowers to these if you'd like. There's a lot you can do with these areas. There we go. I don't want to do too, too much right now because I don't want to accidentally take out all of the earthy hue, but I will add just a little bit of a highlight to the tops, the peaks of these darker ones, because they protrude fairly high up. And when they do that, they catch light. So as we step back, we can see it really coming together. I'm excited. It's, um, it's one of those very rewarding portions of the painting. And now I'm ready to start highlighting some of the more pivotal areas that I was hesitant to do earlier because we didn't see it as a whole yet and we weren't sure how bright we could go with a lot of our subjects. So now I will grab some of that cad yellow and titanium white, mix up a really bright variant. You can look at it in relation to everything else that we have on the palette. And I'll pick some of my favorite Little fallen leaves down here. And we'll continue highlighting those. Remember they get smaller and turn into little taps as we get into the distance. We can even make strands of them. It's something I like to do. You can see how it kind of progresses like that subtly. Taking my pinky finger, resting it on my easel to eliminate shake from my hand. I think we can also work some of them on here. Inside as well. Just bringing it all together, right? Maybe a little bit of green, more titanium white. The amount you add is very much up to you. I'm just a really big fan of this effect. I think it's a great extra detail. It adds pattern. It has a contrasting hue. It makes it lively, feel organic. When I was in university for art, the word organic was kind of uh, kind of laughed at a little bit because everybody, myself included, used it to describe art in so many forms all the time. And then I think there was this conscious effort to move away from the word because it was so used. And then there was a the realization that no, you know what? The word should be used. The word is great, it's just applicable 
in so many scenarios, and it, it feels correct in so many scenarios, that it's just a, a golden word in the space, I feel. So we stick with organic. You can see how I just keep adding them. <laughs> keep building them up, keep making them a little bit brighter. I know that we've been painting for quite some time now. Video is probably at the two hour mark. So I would like to say a big thank you to you for sticking around, for being a part of this. It's been a really fun journey to get back to something green <laughs> after all of the cooler winter months. Did miss this and I'm very much looking forward to some sun, some summer travels. Just getting out again, you know? Seeing scenes like this. It's exciting. But that's what's so wonderful about painting. It can take you there, mentally, in times where it's not really an option, you know? I think that's why painting's been so special to so many of us over the last two years, two to three years, I guess. Just being inside, being able to escape through art and canvas, it's um, kind of therapeutic, right? Taking some of these highlights and working them into the areas that are going to receive the most light in this tree. So predominantly the right hand side, but we are moving it over a little bit, especially in the protruding portions. using the liner brush so that I can really articulate detail. Definitely need to follow that up here. That said, I'd also like to say a big thank you as we typically do as always try to do to everybody up over on Patreon for making this lesson and every lesson like it happen. In no world would I be able to spend this much time not only painting but figuring out the lessons, sometimes doing them two or three times just to figure out the best way of going about teaching it and layering it and just going about that process. If it wasn't for you and your direct support, thank you for making this something that can and does happen. Thank you for letting this be how I spend my days thinking about and making paintings that, you know, we get to explore together. Really is special. I appreciate it. If you uh, made it to the end of the last two videos, you probably noticed the little thank you screen got a little bit bigger. Started incorporating the names of people who support the channel at another level up there. Also, for those of you who may be new and this, maybe this is your first lesson with us, up over on Patreon you can get the traceable for all of the lessons that we do, help you with that drawing process, make it a bit easier so you have the perspective, the sizing, all the proportions correct. And that way you get to jump into the painting process a little bit faster. But up there you can also see a photo I take of all the materials so you can make sure you're working with the exact same pigments and everything. You can also get access to all of my ebooks, including acrylics for beginners, which is essentially the essentials. Everything you need to know about acrylic painting before you jump into your first acrylic painting. I think I've said that <laughs> maybe 300 times, but it all continues to stand true. 
There are also a bunch of ebooks full of additional traceables for days where you want to create something but you're not sure exactly what that is. Up there you can also get access to our exclusive Facebook group where everybody shares their renditions and their artwork. It's a really supportive group. I say it in most videos but I am so proud of the community up there. I feel like every time I'm reading the comments and I don't, I don't always respond. I don't always um, interject because I, I really just like to see the community's thoughts, opinions, and support. You know, I, I think that if I interject on all of them, then that's kind of waited for where I want it to be a more communal thing, which it really has become, which I love. And to everybody who is helping everybody else, thank you. That's wonderful. That's exactly what I wanted out of the group. But it's a great way to see other renditions, share yours, get advice, get inspired. It's a wonderful place. There's just so many little pieces to add. <laughs> just keep painting and painting. But I love it and it's fun. Yeah. I will note something else that we are trying, that we're doing again on Patreon, is the art critiques, where at the, uh, the Great Wide Open tier, you can send in your work monthly, and I'll make a little review video. Uh, it's not public on the channel, it's just uh, private amongst the supporters at that level, but it's essentially me looking over your artwork talking about how I might move forward with it, what's working really well, what you should take into your next paintings, but also what, um, what you can spend some time on. The idea is to keep it just very comfortable, supportive, relaxed, kind of like these lessons, you know? Except it's very much focused on you and what you're making. So that's fun. Always trying to make it a better experience up there. One way or another. Here, as you can see, mixing a bit more of our highlight. Because I also want to interject a little bit of that through here. You can see that I'm applying it fairly quickly, sporadically, that's intentional. I want it to still have that randomized look and aesthetic. Putting it behind a lot of those openings. I think it's coming together pretty, pretty nicely. I had a vision for this one, but I didn't think I'd like it this much. I'm really happy. And very much hoping that you are too. That if you are painting along and you have a piece, that you are extremely satisfied with not only the painting itself, but the process. That it was relaxing and relieving and a little bit inspiring maybe too. Perhaps a good escape. And if you haven't started yet, I hope you're excited too. Get a little bit more quiet when I paint the grass. 
because I know I need to calm my breath a little bit to get the intentionally sharp strokes. I think that right there is our painting. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for joining me on this artistic journey. As a lot of you know, when we get towards the end of these, I like to give you a little code word, a little keyword, something you can use in the comments to note that you were a part of this. Um, just a <laughs> little badge of honor that you made it to the end in a very long video, very long lesson. So today, let's go with the word draping. All of these are draping. You can just type the word if you'd like, or you can incorporate it into a sentence, but essentially if you do so, I and everybody else you've got here will know that you were also one of the typically 13% to make it at the end. So thank you. I wish you the absolute best with yours, and I hope that you have a wonderful time. So I'll see you soon, and above all, as always, say creative.